circles, stars, stripes, everything symmetrical, everything must be perfect, everything must be precise, it's all geometrical, there's no room for errors, there's no room for mistakes, this just might be my most difficult and challenging repair yet, the legendary beast, Captain America. Picture this, you're a collector, you accidentally bump into the head sculpt of your statue, it falls off, lands on Captain America's shield, that also falls off, and they both land on the floor and break. That's what happened with this statue. Captain America's portrait survived most of the impact, just a few light scuffs on his mask, around the mouth, behind the neck, and a nick on his ear. However. Captain America's shield did not fare so well. It's now cracked into two pieces. But what you don't see on camera is the larger section of the shield also has a hairline crack. So now it becomes a guessing game. Do I leave it alone and hope that it doesn't break in the future and go ahead and repair the shield the way it is now? Or do I test that area, apply some pressure and see if it breaks? This way I know for sure. The last thing I would want to do is spend my time and effort fixing this, only to find out that the other section is just going to break again in the future. So in this case, I decided to apply some pressure to the other area of the shield. And sure enough, it did crack off. The bad part, I'm now stuck with more work to do. But the good thing is, I now know it's future proof and I can go in and move forward with the repair. So. Let's begin. The first step will be to epoxy weld the shield back together. We have three pieces of the shield that need to be glued together. And then on the back of the shield, we have Captain America's arm held in by leather straps that will also need to be glued back together. I ended up reattaching all of the parts of Captain America's shield off camera as it required all of my attention and focus to make sure everything aligned correctly as that will set the outcome of how the rest of this repair will go. I went to my go-to glue, which is what I use in every repair. It's a two-part epoxy. I use it in all my repair videos. And if you haven't checked it out yet, check out my tutorial that teaches you everything about this glue and how to use it. It's been one day since the parts have been glued back together and the areas have been sanded, which is another great thing about this glue is that you can sand it. So, now that Captain America's shield is a hole once again, the next step will be paint. But, because of how large the break is and how much area of the shield it covers, I don't feel it's worth to try to patch up those areas with a splash of red, white, and blue. So, in this case, the shield will be getting a complete paint makeover. So, the next step will be to apply the primer before the paint. This specific primer is an automotive primer. It's a filler as well as sandable. The filler part will fill in any tiny surface scratches or imperfections, or in this case, any crack lines. And the sandable part, well, while all primer is somewhat sandable, this specific primer sands a lot easier into a fine powdery substance, as opposed to most primers which will clump up inside your sandpaper, making this process a lot more easier and controllable to get that nice smooth surface area on the front of his shield. The primer is being applied in two to four coats, two light coats of a fine mist to get the primer to adhere to the surface. After that, you can go in with a heavier spray to get more coverage. It's the next day and the primer had some time to dry and cure. The surface area was sanded once again to get that nice smooth consistency. Before we can apply the red, white, and blue, we need to do one more step. Some colors of paint, such as white and red, need special attention to get proper coverage. They cannot be applied heavy-handed. They need to be applied in very light, thin layers, 
to reach that maximum opaque, saturated color. So we cannot simply just spray white or red on top of black. So the next step will be to bump that black color up into a lighter color such as gray, which is an excellent base tone color underneath the color white or red. And in this case, I'll be using a gunmetal silver, being its Captain America's shield, to give it that nice metallic sheen underneath that red, white, and blue. Once the proper base tone is applied, we can now move forward, and next will be the color white. And for the same reason, it's difficult to paint red or white on top of black. The same goes for the colors red and white. I don't want to put down red first, and then try to cover the stripe with white. So the white will go down first, which will take care of that one white stripe, as well as the white star. Then those two areas will get masked off, and I will apply the red and the blue. It's looking good. We have nice coverage of the white. A clear coat has been applied to protect the paint. Masking tape will be applied. And now comes one of the most challenging parts of this paint job. If you ever find yourself needing to mask off an area of a statue, do not use the tape that I'm about to use. Go to a hobby store and get proper masking tape. Tamiya or Tamiya is great or any automotive stencil tape. However, I'm faced with the scenario to where I cannot use that type of tape. I need a tape that I could see through. I need a tape that I can cut through. Captain America's shield is not completely flat. The shield has raised edges between each section of the stripes. And for that reason, I need to be able to see through my tape so that I can go in with my X-Acto blade and carefully cut a circular pattern around each shape to apply the next colors. I don't plan or expect this to go well. I already know this tape will lift, and I already know there will be paint bleed that will need to be touched up by brush. But at this stage, I have no other choice, and for that reason, everything from here on out, I'm about to break every rule that normally applies to painting. But it's not all that bad, and there is some good. Captain America's star. I don't need to see through it, and therefore I can use the proper tape. But things are about to get a lot uglier before they get any better. There's about to be a lot of paint bleed, overspray. At this point, I don't really care too much. It's going to be a back and forth process, me versus the shield, to get this to look correct. No matter how many times I have to go over a certain section, over and over and over again until it looks right, that's what I will do for this final outcome.
And that's exactly what I did off camera. Back and forth, back and forth, until I get that final look to where I can get it as good as possible. And here is the final outcome. But wait, before we can get to that, whatever happened to the back of the shield? Well, the back of the shield received the same treatment as the front of the shield with the silver metallic gunmetal paint with an additional darker metallic metal paint for some weathering. And then we still have Captain America's arm, which still needs to be glued back on. And as always, going in with the two-part epoxy weld, there's six points of contact, four points on the leather straps, and two points on the arms. I have six minutes to complete this setup, and that's how long it takes for this epoxy to cure. So, let's not waste any time. From here on out, we need to still cover up those cracks on the leather straps using some epoxy sculpt to fill in any gaps and sculpting any texture. Using a lighter brown color that does not match the original paint, well, why is that? lighter paint turns darker once I apply my ink wash which I will fill in all the cracks and crevices and highlight those leather textures. From there everything will blend nice and smooth with the factory paint. And with some last minute details and touches to the overall paint off camera, here's a look at the final result. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next project. Take care.